We're going to do a couple tonight, and we're going to do them a cappella or Acapulco or wherever you want to go. We're going to do that. And uh, you know, the nice thing about it is, is you know, we like it when the congregation and everybody really steps up and joins in and everything. So Wes decided he's going to sing solo the first one. Solo, we can't hear you. Okay, all right. But this one, everybody should know, page 305 in your Rejoice Hymnal. He set me free. Amen. 305. You'll stand with us and let's hear your voices loud and sing to God. Amen. Once like a bird in prison I dwell, no freedom from my sorrow I fell. But Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound my Jesus to see, for glory to God, he set me free. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. And glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see, for glory to God, he set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound, naught of the world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to, and glory to God, I'm going through. He set me free, he set me free, he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see, for glory to God, he set me free. Amen. We're going to do another one. Yeah. Just got led to sing this one when I was sitting back there and... And Kathy told me that we're on our own tonight, and I just started paging through it, and this one just hit me because it's the songs in, in this Rejoice Hymn will just really have a lot of messages. Amen. And this one's just beautiful. Turn to page 108. What a lovely name. There's a name above all others, wonderful to hear, bringing hope and cheer. It's the lovely name of Jesus, evermore the same, evermore the same. What a lovely name, a lovely name. What a Jesus, reaching higher, far, reaching higher, far than the brightest than star. The brightest star. Sweeter songs they sing in heaven. Let the world, proclaim. let the world proclaim what a lovely name, a lovely name. Through, Through His name, there's wondrous power. Power to redeem, power to redeem, making sinners clean as sinners clean. By his power he cleansed the leper, open blinded, open blinded eyes, cause the dead to rise, the dead to rise. What a name, the name of Jesus. Reaching higher far, than the 
brightest star. And the brightest star. Sweeter songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim. Let the world proclaim. What a lovely name, a lovely name. He'll return in clouds of glory. Saints of every race, Saints of every race shall behold his face, his wonderful face. With him enter heaven city, ever to acclaim, ever to acclaim. What a lovely name, a lovely name. What a name, the name of Jesus. Reaching higher far, reaching higher far than the brightest star. Than the brightest star. Sweeter as the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim. Let the world proclaim. What a lovely name, a lovely name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Russ, so very much. What a lovely name. There's no lovelier name than the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm getting more homesick for heaven every passing day. This old world don't have much attraction for me, uh, but that next one that comes, what I'm attracted to and I'm drawn to. And there's just, uh, you know, so much going on in, in, in this old world. And if I understood everyone right, the... The COVID-19 is spiking more. Uh, boy, uh, we just want to be much in prayer. Brother Jimmy, uh, come up and share with me. Wants us to remember uh, Greg Hyder's little mom. I think they went over today. was on the parking lot and had special prayer for, for uh, Mrs. Uh, Hyder and also all the other COVID patients that, that were there at the medical center. And uh, we, we just and do remember the uh, Anthony Johnson family. A uh, wonderful, godly Christian man was taken home to be with the Lord. And uh, let's just pray for his, his dear wife and the five children. There, there's a lot going on in this old world. But I'm, I'm looking forward to a day and a time when there won't be any more cancer, no more deadly viruses, no more uh, violence and hatred and bigotry and, and prejudice and and I'm just looking forward to seeing Jesus. Anybody else in here looking forward to seeing Jesus? Well, we that are getting older, you know, death, we think about death a lot of times. We think it's old, older people that die. But you know, death is no respect of ages, is it? It, it comes to us all. And uh, the main thing is we just need to be ready uh, uh, to meet the Lord. Uh, we had another young lady uh, rededicated her life to Christ right after uh, the service she come up to me and was talking to me and crying she said preacher I I need to rededicate my life to the Lord so after service was over it, it was something I was talking to sister Sharon sister Teresa right after service I said I just have a heavy heart I said I I feel like there was more you know needed to come I felt like somebody needed to come and it wasn't I bet you a minute a minute and a half and uh, sister Christy come up to me and she was a crying and she said preacher I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, turn my life back over to the Lord and so she did and that's what it's all about isn't it it's all about people getting right with the Lord and she's got the sweetest little little toddler her little daughter she's so beautiful and precious and uh, we were thrilled that just that just tickled us that uh, we come to her and sister Amy we anointed her with oil and prayed for her that headache's gone headache's gone isn't God good amen <laughs> hey we, we we believe we know there's no power in, in this anointing oil. There's power in Jesus. But we use this anointing oil because Brother James talked about it. And I'm, I'm glad we still do this. You know, a lot of the other churches used to do this, but some of them don't do it no more. But, but you know what? I believe in the Bible and I believe in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's still healing, isn't he? Amen. I know many of us wouldn't be here tonight if Jesus wasn't still healing. Amen. So I've, I, how many felt his healing touch on your life? I have, and I, I know that he, he's, he's all powerful. And uh, we've got so much to thank the Lord for, so much to uh, pray for tonight. Uh, does anybody have any special uh, prayer?
prayer request before we go to the throne of grace. Sister Amy. Uh, yes. Oh my, oh my. Let's remember this request. And pray for us, we'll be having the uh, graveside service up, up Burbank, up toward Rome Mountain at the Greer Family Cemetery for Brother Lawrence Boom. Uh, they are going to have, uh, and I'll let you know more detail, I mentioned this this morning, but they are they're wanting to have a celebration of life service here at the church. Uh, how many members Brother Bill Butler's service? Wasn't that, wasn't that a precious service? And they said after they left that service, they got in the car and Brother Lawrence looked at Mary and I believe some of the kids and he said, I want that kind of service, amen? So we'll, we'll be letting you all know more about it. And I, I'd say probably they'll be waiting for a while, maybe give this COVID-19, maybe hopefully get this thing cleared out of the way. But we'll let you know more detail. But we're going to have a, a special celebration of life service. Let me just say this about Brother Lawrence Boone. I know there was many times, not just the last several months when they hadn't given him long to live here on earth, but there were many times when Brother Lawrence Boone, you'd see him here at church, and I knew, I knew physically he didn't feel like being here, but his love for Jesus was greater than any pain that he had. He wanted to be here at the house of God with his brothers and sisters in Christ, and I think that just speaks volumes, don't you? But uh, he will be, uh, he's already missed, but he'll be dearly missed. But we're going to carry on with the work of the Lord. And uh, God's going to get us through this, church. Amen. He is. It's, uh, we've, ne we've never been through anything like this. But, but you know what? Going through this, if we'll trust in the Lord, it'll, it'll make our faith stronger. Amen. And pure. And there's things in life I wouldn't choose to go through. And I know there are for you. But because we're allowed to go through it, we, we, we learn more about God and about ourselves. We learn how much we need Him. Amen? So, uh, so let's be much in prayer. And let's pray for our country. Pray for our leaders. They need our prayers. And uh, let's just pray that... Uh, who can straighten this mess out in our country? Only one, the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's just pray. Pray for one another. There's a lot of hurting people in this world. And they just need the gospel. They need Jesus. Amen? And that, that's why we're here on this hill. We're here to be a beacon in the night. To be light for our Lord Jesus Christ. Any other prayer request? All right. Let's remember this prayer. I also remember the Trent family, the young lady, Laura Trent, that was killed in, a, in an automobile accident a few days ago. Uh, I can't imagine what the mama's going through and, and the daddy and, all the, and the family. Uh, the mother's a good work. Well, I think it works with Brother Scott, I believe, Fletcher. So uh, please remember the Trent family. I just, you know, tragedy, we've experienced tragedy in our family, and no doubt probably you have in your family as well. And it, it just comes so sudden. You, uh, it just comes so quickly. But uh, please remember that uh, dear mother. And I believe she was, uh, was it 20? 23, I think. She was 23. Uh, any other prayer requests? Brother West, how's your sister doing, Mary? Amen. Amen. Yes, keep praying for them. Pray for Brother Joel. He is with us this morning. It was, it was good to see him. You keep praying for him and uh, just lifting him up to the Lord. Any others? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh boy. Yeah. About a good yeah. Jesus Amen. I know you'd be glad to have have them back. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. That's, is that close to Bryson City, right down in there, yeah. Sylvan? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll never forget, uh, it's been years ago, I can't remember how long ago, I was preaching a revival at, in Bryson City, North Carolina, and 
for some reason, Dad went with me, and they had us a place to stay. And uh, it was like a house. And the pastor, Brother Mike, uh, he had come to see, see if everything was fine. We was talking to him. And I said, Brother Mike, I said, uh, how close are we to the Smokies? He said, you're right in the heart of them. <laughs> you know, they're in Bryson City. That's some pretty country. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, I hadn't seen Brother Mike in a long time. But uh, that's, that's a pretty place over in there. And that's better than Baton Rouge. I know that. Amen. And I know you. How old is your grandson? Six months? No, he's a year, and, a year and eight months. A year and eight months. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Boy, I know, I know you're going to really, and Sister Martha, really enjoy having them closer. Uh, let's do pray for them at traveling. You can be careful. That don't mean the other driver's going to be careful, does it? So let's just pray for traveling grace. Uh, any other prior requests? Yes. Brother. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Remember her little mama. Remember Sister Street. Yes. All right. Pray for our service. And how about the unspoken request? Let's all stand to our feet and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Barry, would you lead us to the Lord in prayer as we all pray together? Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Yes, amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Barry. As of Brother West, have you got any in for Brother Norbert since since we've met? Was that since you saw me another hundred? Okay. That's right. Now our total that we've got that has come in for Brother Norbert is one thousand and fifteen dollars. Isn't that awesome? Amen. And thank you all from, from the depths of our heart. I know Brother Norbert appreciates this. Uh, so that means as as soon as we can get the as soon as we can get the rest, the better because we probably need to write him a check and he can get that in his checking account and go ahead and book him a flight. So I'm a hoping that we can get the, the rest of that raised in in the next no way or hopefully the next week I'm hoping so if anybody else can want to thank everyone by the way uh, for for that uh, gift that uh, the all the gifts that you have uh, given and of course the uniforms brother Clinton uh, mentioned that uh, today earlier that uh, received all the monies in for, for the uniforms so and I think that's going to go through the youth through the youth department so uh, they'll be making sure that brother Norbert gets that and then 
If you want to write a check, make that check out to Milligan Free Will Baptist Church, earmark it to Norbert's uh, plane ticket. And Brother West, he's keeping all that. He's putting all that in the bank, keeping a tab on it, and then he's going to write one check so Brother Norbert uh, can, uh, can get that ticket. And I know he's excited about, about going back home. And just think, I know he's probably going to take some pictures, how, how, how beautiful it's going to be to see them boys and girls in their uniforms. Amen. And that's, uh, thank you so much for, for making that uh, a reality. Open your Bibles with me. We're going to go to the Old Testament uh, this evening. And I want you to look with me at 1 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians, 1 Chronicles chapter 29. 1 Chronicles chapter 29. I, lo I, love, this, uh, I love this chapter. Uh, David is uh, getting close to death. And... You recall that he had a desire to build God a house. He wanted to build a temple for God. And, uh, and at first, you know, he was told to go ahead. But then the Lord uh, told the prophet, I believe it was Nathan, he told him, he said, you go back and tell uh, David that uh, uh, he, he has shed a, a lot of blood, that uh, it's not my will for him to build me this temple, but I'm going to build him a house. <laughs> And we know through the, the line of the tribe of Judah, which David was from the tribe of Judah, we know the Messiah came up from David. And God said, I'm going to build you a house. And so uh, that's awesome, isn't it? You want to do something for God. And God turns around and says, let me do something for you. And you know, what God does for us is a lot greater than what we do for Him, isn't it? And we appreciate uh, the Lord. And uh, I want to just... Uh, I'll, I'll let you remain seated. Here's what God's had on my heart to preach to you for a few minutes this evening on this subject. God's call to service. And I'm going to start at verse number 1. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, David speaking here, Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and, and tender uh, or inexperienced, and the work is great, for the palace or the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold and, and the silver. My page is sticking. For the silver, things of silver, and the brass for things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and wood for things of wood. Onyx stones and stones to be set, glistering stones and of divers colors and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of mine own proper good of gold and silver which I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Even 3,000 talents of gold of the gold of Ophir and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses withal. And here's where my message is coming from. The gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers. And then he, and then he asks this, will you read the rest of this with me? And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord and I gotta go on and read verse 6 then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work what did they do offered what offered willingly Lord thank you for your word bless the preaching of it uh, for your glory and Lord anoint our lips of clay speak to your people's hearts may us be a blessing and a challenge to us in Jesus name help me remember what I've studied amen and amen. This is a most wonderful passage. The incident mentioned in the context took place uh, years ago. This text, however, in spite of its antiquity, has not lost its beauty or its charm. There are some things that even though they're old, have not lost their utility nor attractive beauty. What about the sun? How old is it? It's just as old as creation. The same sun that ripened the grain last year kissed the fields into beauty and productiveness at the very beginning. The same sun that shines today caressed the locks of our foreparents in the Garden of Eden. 
And yet, even though it's old, it's raised, we're not one whit more welcome then than they are now. What about the water we drink, the air that we breathe, and the fragrance of the flowers that we inhale? How old are they? Like the sun, they're just as old as creation. Yet, they're just as welcome now as they were in the olden golden days of the past. It's even so with our passage tonight, our text. It's, it's very old, and yet in no way has it lost its beauty nor its worth. As we look to God's call service, I'd like you to notice with me, number one, the nature of the service to which you and I are called. Look at the original application. We're familiar with the, this passage. It has reference to a preparation that was being made for the building of the temple. You know, preparation had to be made for the building of this church. And the first building was converted out of an old garage and people had to make preparation. They donated their time. They donated their talents. They donated their financial uh, resources. And by doing that, it, uh, of course, God owns it all anyway, but God blesses us with all things. He gives us life, breath, and everything. But aren't you thankful that there's people that before us answered the call to God's service? And you and I, it's up to you and me to answer the call to God's service. You remember how that we had, we had run out of parking here at the church. This was before COVID-19 had hit and uh, how God blessed us. And we had uh, sought with the gentleman to buy some property to our left and right. And at that time, he, he was unwilling to, to sell that property. And so I knew that Emmanuel... Uh, owned the property behind us and praise the Lord we know Emmanuel uh, merged with Milligan and I, and I just felt a sense of urgency and so I, I called the president's office at it's Milligan University now and Dr. Uh, Bill Greer was so nice to me and we uh, 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 appointment was set up for he and I to come together and so I, I met with the man he was such a gracious man a kind man and we began to have a conversation and I remember praying, and I remember asking the Lord. I remember the prayer. Do you remember prayers you pray? How many of you remember some prayers? I mean, if it's something real uh, monumental or something that, that, that you really need God to do something on your behalf. Anybody ever prayed that prayer and you remember that prayer? Well, I remember this prayer. And these are the very words I said. I said, Lord, help me to say the things that you would want me to say. It's right before I went to meet the president of Milligan University. And then I said, Lord, help me not to say the things I don't need to say. Amen. Because I how many's ever said things you didn't need to say? <laughs> it come out and you thought, what in the world did I say that? And I remember he he welcomed me at the door there. I walked in, sat down and and then we started talking and then we talked about the property and he said, well, he said, how how much would you like to buy? Because there's a little over ten and a half acres. Well I said, well as much as you'll sell us. And so he, he looked into it, and we ended up uh, buying from them. It was like right at five and a half acres, I believe. And uh, isn't that beautiful property back there in that parking lot? And, you know, uh, only God knows what's in store for Milligan Free Will Baptist Church. But what does God want out of you and me? God wants us to serve him in our generation right now, to answer that call. You know, David wanted to build God a house. But God told him he wasn't the one to build it. But that didn't stop David to make things a little bit easier for his son, to help him. And that's what you and I should want to do. We should want to make it a little bit easier if time goes on and the Lord don't come back for his church. That whoever follows us, they'll have an easier time and they can just take the ball and run with it and, and see great things done for the glory of God. And God's people said, Amen. So, so we know a lot of the Lord's work you might not uh, see it. I might not see it. But a lot of hard work goes on uh, that only God sees. But I'm going to tell you what. God don't forget anything that we do for his honor and for his glory. So I'm sure David for a little while was disappointed that he wasn't uh, allowed to build God a house. But God told him something greater. God said, I'm, because of this desire, and then God said, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to build you a house. We know that Solomon and Hiram and, and others, uh, their, their lives are suggestive of wisdom, strength, and beauty. But, and it's necessary that there should be wisdom to contrive, strength to support, and beauty to adorn all great and important undertakings. Although these men get the credit for building the temple, 
We must remember that David first suggested the idea. He made many arrangements. He collected much of the material. He knew it could not be completed without help. So in the language of the text, he called for assistance. And he said these words. And who then, notice this, and who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? What a great question to ask each and every one of us. We see the original application in the nature of the service to which we're called, but let's go to the personal application here. We should not fail to give to this passage that personal application. God is putting the question to you and me. He's asking us, or who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? This age calls for service. Someone has said there are three classes of people in the church. The workers, the shirkers, and the jerkers. I want to repeat that. There are three classes of people in the church. The workers, the shirkers, and the jerkers. Another said there are two classes of people in the church. Those who lean and those who lift. This age, our time is calling for workers and for lifters. All right. We've looked and we've seen uh, the, the nature of this service which we're called in this calling to do the service of God. But secondly, I want you to notice with me the characteristics of this service to which you and I are called. What kind of service is it? Well, number one, it's a willing service. God, as God's servants, we're to be willing. We're to be available. We're, we're to yield our wills, our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we call ourselves free will Baptists. We're free moral agents. God doesn't make us do anything. But if we love Him, we'll want to serve God. We'll want to do what He wants us to do. You see, He didn't force us to become Christians, and He doesn't force us to become servants. There's one threshold which God will not cross, and that's the threshold of human responsibility. There are things that God requires of us. There's things God knows we cannot do. That's the things God does. But there are things that you and I as Christians, in being good stewards, that God calls us to do. He wants us to be willing. It, it needs to be a willing service. And let, let me just say right there, it ought to be an honor to us to do anything for the sake of Christ. To do anything that will help another brother or a sister in Christ. To do anything that will honor and uplift the name of Jesus. To do anything that we can to reach a lost and dying world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I just want to say this because I feel it strongly in my spirit. Church, the Lord's not through with us yet. There's a lot of people need to be led to Christ that's lost. And we need to be about our Father's business like our Lord was. So let's, let's, let's let it be a willing service. How else? What should it be, this service, a characteristic to which we're called? Well, it's an immediate service. Notice the two words, this day. Notice that. It's in that verse there. He says, who then is willing? Let's look at that. Who then is willing to consecrate his service? What's those next two words? This day. This day. You never serve God tomorrow. Can't do anything about the past. We serve God in the present. We serve God in the now, uh, today. Amen? You know, there are some people who constantly live in the past. Such people are never useful. Such people seem to be never happy. There are others who constantly live in the future. They're always talking about what they intend to do. Their eyes are so focused on the future that they fail to see the beauties and the opportunities of the present. There are very few people who are actually living in the here and the now. Yes, uh, it's said in the office of a successful lawyer, he had this motto, quote, Yesterday is past. Tomorrow may never come. If you have anything to do, get busy and do it now. God wants us to do that. All right, what's another characteristic of our service to which we're called in, in the kingdom of God? Well, we, there's no way we can get around this. It's a consecrated service. 
Yes, there are many Christians, but there are few consecrated Christians. Our lives should be that we may truthfully say, He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. We need to be led of God. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's no way around it. Consecration is simply a giving up of ourself completely to God. Amen. Dying out to ourself and living unto the Lord. Sacrificing ourself to the service of, of the kingdom of God. So we see it's a consecrated service. You can read through the Bible and all the men and the women that God used. They were consecrated. They were totally dedicated and devoted and given over to doing the will of the Lord. And thank you for your devotion to the Lord. Your consecrated service. What else is it? Finally, the fourth characteristic of our service to which we're called, it's an individual service. Nobody can serve God in your place. You're an individual. I'm an individual. We're to do what God has given us the calling to do. Notice David is an old man. He's getting ready to cross over through death into eternity. And he realizes that Solomon's still a young man. Solomon needs a, a boost. Solomon uh, needs help. Solomon needs encouragement. Solomon needs to have that uh, assurance that he's not going to take this uh, great endeavor on uh, by himself. That he needs others to come along uh, around him and with him to do the work of the Lord. And let me say, church, I can't do this all by myself. You can't do this all by yourself. But when we come together in one mind and one accord under the uh, blood-stained banner of the old rugged cross of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do anything for the glory of God when we come together under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And we do it because we love the Lord and we want to honor Him and we want to be a blessing to those around us. So David is getting ready to pass on, getting ready to die. And he asked this question, and who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? Yes, I love that next verse, we, we read it, and I want us to go back there. Thank God there were individuals that answered this call from King David. Verse number 6, we read it, but I want us to read it again. After he asked this question, he says, Then we read, Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers... Of the king's work, what did they do? They offered willingly. Every, every member of the family of God, you have gifts, you have talents that you can freely offer to the glory of God to be used by the Lord. I know there's certain things I, I, I don't have the capacity, I, I don't have the expertise to do, but praise God. The whole experience, Brother Clinton, God used him to draw out the blueprint and the plans for the new parking lot. It's wonderful. A Brother Steve Matherly, the Lord put Brother Steve here in the church and didn't he do a fine job? It's amazing how things come together when God's people pull together and we unite together to do the will of the Lord. And I, Brother West, how much do we owe on the parking lot? Is it five, it's 5000 now. Isn't that great? We only owe $5,000. On, that, on the additional parking lot. And, and God's good, isn't He? God's good. God's good. All the time. God's a good God. And so uh, we offer ourselves willingly and, and freely. It's fundamental. With the gift of self, every other gift follows. I'm going to say that again. With the gift of ourselves, every other gift follows. 
Paul says of the Macedonians in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 5. But first they gave their own selves to the Lord. Right there. That's, that's the first prerequisite that we've got to meet and we've got to keep. We've got to give ourselves completely over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? What does that mean? That means that you're no longer in charge of your own life. The Lord Jesus Christ is. And it remains to be seen what one man or one woman can do for the glory of God that's completely given over to the will of God and the work of God for their life. What they can do for the sake and the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember uh, this is years ago. I woke up in the middle of the night and I just happened to go turn on the television. It was on a, on a Christian station. And they just happened to be uh, showing, it was a pretty old movie, but it was on the life of Dwight L. Moody. And I remember uh, Brother Moody, he was talking to his wife and he had just heard an English evangelist. And that was one statement that, that just uh, moved Brother Moody. And he said, you know, what the brother said, it remains to be uh, seen what one man that's completely given over to God can do for the, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ and what they can do that's completely given over to him. And then Brother Moody said these words to his wife, I want to be that man. Amen. And God used uh, Dwight L. Moody not only uh, greatly here in the United States but over in uh, Great Britain and over in the United Kingdom. God used him uh, in a mighty way. I, I remember a story. Uh, there was a lady that had saw a, a, a clipping in the paper about uh, Brother uh, Moody, Dwight L. Moody. And it, it so moved her. And she happened to be a member of Charles Spurgeon's church there in London. And this, this woman, this little woman, she was an invalid. She was crippled, but uh, she was a member of the church. And you know what that little woman did? She started praying. Now, this is how awesome God is. And she said, Lord, could you send that man to our church to have a revival? And guess what? It happened. Uh, uh, Charles Spurgeon, a great Baptist preacher, he called Brother Moody over, and they had a great revival. I, I don't know how many people were saved uh, in, that, in that meeting, in that revival. All because one little old lady, one crippled lady, couldn't even go to church. She saw a news clipping that, that uh, was talking about Dwight L. Moody. And she asked the Lord, could you send him over here to our church? And God did. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying God wants to use us all. God has give us, given us all gifts. And when we come together and we give ourselves to the Lord, my goodness, we're going to see him do far uh, greater things than we could ever think or imagine in our own hearts and lives. But we've got to willingly give ourselves to the Lord. And by the way, let me close with this. Brother Russ is going to come and lead us in a song. Let me close with this. David wasn't asking other people to do something that he hadn't already done. Amen? I'd be the biggest hypocrite of all and ask you to give yourself willingly over to the Lord and me not first give myself willingly over to the Lord. Hey, listen. God wants to use us much more than even we want Him to use us. Let's just give ourselves uh, unconditionally over to Him and say, Lord, take my life and let it be everything, God, that you want it to be. Help me to do, Father, everything that you want me to do. As we stand to our feet, Brother Russ is going to lead us in a, in a song. We're going to sing together. I want to challenge you to offer yourself to the Lord this evening. Number 230. Everybody knows this one. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see. We're going to sing one more verse. Let me say this. I couldn't help it. God just spoke to my heart. One of his dear servants, he seemed to always, and we know that on the board, 
wasn't Brother Lawrence and, and well, Brother Ken and all of our board members as willing, but Brother Lawrence was always willing, wasn't he, to do anything that he could do. Well, the good Lord has promoted Brother Lawrence. Now it's up to you and me, amen, to follow in those footsteps and for you and me to be willing to make ourselves available to the Lord for him to use us in whatever capacity that he wants us that he wants to use us. I'm going to challenge you tonight to make a personal decision. Will you step out and come to this altar and by you coming out, you're saying, Lord, you say, Preacher, I've done it before. We wouldn't hurt you to do it again. You coming of your own free will and, and willingly offering yourself up to God. Will you step out right now and come and say, God, I'm, I'm giving myself to you. Brother Russ is going to lead us in one more verse. Will you come? Come on. When we've been there Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun We've no less days To sing God's praise Than when we first begun Join us in prayer Holy Spirit, we thank you, God, for those willing servants of yours that trailed the, the blaze that trailed before us, Lord, that was willing to sacrifice themselves, and Lord, they answered the call to serve us, and Lord, many of these precious people, I could, we'd be here a long time calling out all the names of those precious saints of God, Lord, that paved the road before us, Lord, that made it possible for us to be where we are tonight. And I'm just asking you, Lord Jesus, as your servants are gathered here, Lord, use us for your glory. Lord, whether that work, it may not be much to the world looking, looking in, but God, we know if we do it out of a sincere heart, Lord, you'll honor it and you'll bless it and your work will go forward. Your name will be honored and glorified. And so, Jesus, I give myself again to you. Lord, we just ask that you would use us here at Milligan, Free Will Baptist Church. Lord, in all of our sister churches, we know the enemy is attacking the people of God, but we're so thankful, God, that you will always have a remnant. Even when there's many that's leaving you, God, you always have a faithful few that will yield their lives to you and their wills and say, Lord, use me for your honor and for your glory. So, Lord, we just offer ourselves up to you and help us, Lord, to be faithful in what you would have us to do. We love you. We magnify you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's uh, praise God that to amazing grace, brother Russ, and we'll just leave, go home. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God.